A very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to today's session topic, Are Consumers Value Trading Due to Inflation? Uh, an exciting topic of our times. Uh, we are consumers ourselves. I'm sure we feel the pinch every time we go to the stores and get our regular monthly uh, groceries, if you may, or anything else that you're buying, including fuel. There's a lot happening, and we have an exciting lineup of, lineup of panelists for you today. Uh, to share with you very interesting nuggets of information and data that you can use in your decision making. Uh, next slide, please, Diana. Obviously, you're on MRSI's Wednesday webinar season five, uh, and, and you have as host uh, Sundar Mutraman, that's I. Uh, go to the next slide, please, uh, Diana. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I was I thought of introducing the other host. That's the slide that's coming up after this, I guess. But here is a very important announcement before that. The 30th MRSI annual market research seminar is around the corner. And here's an exciting Diwali offer to all of you if you have not already registered. The early bird discount has been extended till 24th of 2022. If you've not registered or your organization has not registered yet, uh, you know, please pick up the phone or click on the link and make sure you get it done. Uh, it's it's obviously, uh, you know, at uh, the Leela Ambience, Gurugram, Delhi, and dated 17th and 18th November 2022. Next slide, please, Pian. Coming back to, obviously, the session host, which I fumbled a bit on, you have me introducing the session today. The other co-host uh, is Samir Grover. You will see him later in the session or hear him later in the session if he has problems with his video. Mukul may not be joining us today, but I'm sure if you're a regular for the Wednesday webinars, you've seen him and you will see more of him as we go on. MRSI, established in 1998, is a unique not-for-profit association of providers and buyers of research and insight. Its role is to create awareness of the industry among public at large, large as well as the government, establish and promote professional standards, and more importantly, provide a platform for professionals to engage and showcase their work, collaborate, and drive common issues. Wednesday webinar is an effort in that direction, and our effort through all our webinars is to kind of spotlight the changing face of insights and MR for all of you. Next slide, please. The bloodline of any webinar are the panelists. Today, we have a very exciting lineup of experts and speakers and panelists for you. From Ipsos, uh, we have Maitre and Ashwini. From Kantar, we have Puneet and Ramki, K. Ramakrishnan. And Nielsen, uh, and from Nielsen, we have Sonika Gupta joining us. Each of them have, uh, you know, I would say, years of expertise in the area that they will speak about today. Now, obviously, uh, you know, uh, the divisions and the uh, roles they play in their organization is uh, up here for all of us to all of us to see. Ashwini uh, is a group services line leader for Ipsos UU and SIA. Ramki is managing director for World Panel. There's a lot of exciting data on how consumers are changing behavior due to inflation is coming up. Maitre is the country service line leader for SIA and she is the executive director for qualitative UU. Maitre and Ashwini, you guys have to step in and say what UU stands for shortly, I guess, after I finish the introduction. Puneet uh, is director of specialist business inside South Asia and business development for Cantor. Sonika Gupta is ex executive director, consumer success and India lead for Nielsen IQ. So, Maitre and Ashwini, one of you quickly, what is UU? So, uh, UU is actually the qualitative division for Ipsos and it stands for Understanding Unlimited. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So, uh, maybe five seconds from all the other speakers, uh, just something that you want to say uh, about yourself or anything about the session. Uh, we'll go in the order of Ramki, Puneet, and Sonika. And Ashwini, you can, you know, kind of round off at the end. Your audio, please, Ramki. Yeah. Hi, Sundar. Thanks for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and, and it's nice to see a well-rounded view of an issue that we are all grappling with. Looking forward to hear the others as well. Wonderful. 
Thank you so much for having us over. This is an interesting topic and all clients seem to be talking about it currently. So let's see how we go through the session. Good, right? Suspense is building um, Thank you uh, for the opportunity, uh, MRSI. Um, looking forward to uh, this discussion and uh, uh, learning a lot from uh, the different uh, agencies that constitute MRSI here, as also the audience. So looking forward to this particular session. So it's definitely a pertinent uh, topic where we'll see all uh, we'll see the integration of all the aspects of consumer and what's happening on the shelf. So really excited for the session and I hope the audience also enjoys it at the same intensity. Wonderful. And then sometimes I've been told that you know bring five experts into a room and you'll have five different opinions. So I'm I'm all ears and eyes to see you know whether our opinions are converging or you know we have different points of view i'm pretty excited uh, so let's head on to the session uh, uh, and just a few uh, you know uh, housekeeping calls uh, audience uh, you know to minimize disturbance and interruptions uh, you can't connect with any of the panelists but we do urge you to raise your questions in the interface that you have on the webinar panel uh, we will bring up these questions to uh, the respective panelists uh, or to the group, uh, you know, at an appropriate time later in the session. But feel free to type in your questions. With that, uh, you know, I'm going to take my face and wise off. Over to you, uh, my pray to kickstart the session. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so first of all, thanks for giving us this opportunity to, you know, talk about this very interesting topic. And also thanks to MRSI because, you know, this is one forum where three agencies are not really competing with each other, but collaborating. So that would be a first, I would think. Uh, so I'm just going to open the session and, you know, talk a little bit about uh, what are the markers of inflation. Uh, and how do consumers actually realize that, you know, inflation is there. Uh, now, interestingly, uh, you know, inflation has been a perennial issue for Indians. It's not something which is new. Uh, inflation and unemployment are not new. And in fact, people are talking about how it's been prevalent since 1947. And really, whichever government that we've had, we've had inflation. So there is a perception that alternative governments are not really going to change the situation. It's something that we have to live with year on year. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so if we, uh, you know, we just uh, dug a little deeper and looked at the World Economic uh, Report. Now, what it showed is that, you know, if you were to compare the data from 2000 to today, uh, while there have been, you know, peaks and troughs, broadly inflation has been somewhere in the range of 4 to 8 percent or so for us. But the new news is that, you know, for the other economies and specifically if you look at United States and UK, inflation is new to them because, you know, so far they, for them inflation was in single digits as close as, you know, one or two percent. And it's only this year that they're really grappling with the issue on a big scale because inflation is somewhere close to, you know, even higher than what we are facing over here. Yeah, move ahead, please. It's been one of the top worries for Indians. So the two top worries that we see in, uh, you know, the uh, Ipsos Essentials research that we do month on month, the first biggest worry is inflation and price increase. And COVID-19 uh, continues to be a worry because, you know, people are not really sure whether it's gone away for sure or it's, there is likely to be a resurgence soon. Beyond that, a lot of the other concerns don't really, you know, matter as much to consumers. Next slide, please. Uh, how do consumers actually figure out and what are the signals really, uh, you know, for inflation? Now, what we did was we tracked the volume of conversations which happen in social media and we tracked this over the last, uh, you know, one odd year or so. And it was interesting to see, you know, you see some of these points which have been highlighted, which are actually the peaks which are there. And there's a high degree of correlation which was happening with fuel prices. So about a year or a year and a half back, fuel prices were uh, about 75 rupees for a liter. Today we are edging closer to 100 rupees for a liter of petrol. So every time there is an increase in the petrol rate, uh, the conversations around inflation in the social media go up. 
and let's see why that is happening so if we move to the next slide that will explain that yeah so uh, what happens is that uh, um, it's uh, you know fuel rise is just a symbol it's while it's a trigger for worry uh, the bigger impact is the domino effect effect that it actually causes so uh, the perception is that any increase in fuel price is also going to lead to an increase in food prices it's going to you know overall uh, increase my expenditure on commuting per se on travel even uh, you know going to a restaurant becomes a lot more expensive so it's not only fuel but also all the other elements around uh, you know uh, or the impact of fuel increase which is a bigger uh, cause of worry for the consumers per se yeah next slide please and um, i would say that you know this year this has been a, a sort of a double whammy for consumers because during the pandemic uh, budgets were stretched people lost their jobs or income didn't really increase the expenses had gone up and on top of that we are dealing with inflation so it's a very uh, you know peculiar sort of a situation because on one hand savings have gone down and on the other hand there is a lot of stress because the upcoming because of upcoming expenses and the fact that you know the savings itself are impacted yeah go ahead But the two noticeable things where people actually notice inflation is shrinkflation and what is shrinkflation is that people are talking about how uh, you know the amount of food that they were getting for that same amount of money that has gone down so whether it's the size of biscuits whether it's the size of lace chip or a maggi packet itself while the price may not have necessarily gone up but the, there has been a shrinkage in terms of the grammage and people are very very conscious about you know these kind of things and they're talking specifically about a lot of the uh, you know uh, fmcg kind of products where there is uh, shrinkflation or a direct price hike which has actually happened and even a 1 or a 2 rupee increase on biscuit prices or whether it's on chips prices makes a huge bit of difference to consumers per se yeah go ahead please now what we're going to do is to you know show you some consumer videos of people's perception around uh, inflation and how are they coping with inflation per se uh, this is through a community that we actually ran with consumers across a couple of cities and this was an online community and what you see over here is people have uploaded you know videos talking about uh, uh, what they think of inflation and how are they actually dealing with the crisis इन्फ्लेशन महंगाई जो थी वो थोड़ी थोड़ी बढ़ती थी सही है हर साल भर साल बट आफ्टर द लॉकडाउन महंगाई एकदम से बढ़ी है बिफोर थ्री ईयर्स जितना खर्चा हमारा दो तीन दिन चलता था उतना आज एक दिन में यूज हो जाता है yeah so um, i'll now uh, pass over the uh, session to puneet from cantar who's going to be talking about the meta changes in earnings attitudes and behavior yeah over to you puneet ladies uh, puneet sorry to interrupt just a moment uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, that was ashwini and not maitre my bad i called out maitre and introduced ashwini as maitre so thank you ashwini puneet over to you and and just a housekeeping call again if audience if any of you have any questions type it in your question panel and we'll take it up in the q and a session later on uh, over to you puneet thank you thanks on the thanks uh, ashwini my apologies um so i have a very brief presentation uh, uh, essentially looking at what are the meta changes that have occurred over the last 3 years in terms of earnings in terms of attitudes therefore uh, attitudes towards spending savings and uh, uh, some behavioral changes uh, largely in the ambit of technology and how that has kind of you know gotten used uh, in uh, uh, in the country as such over the last 3 years and it's been a period of significant change on account of covid uh, and the enforced lockdown 
and uh, uh, subsequently, of course, uh, the economic uh, issues that one has been uh, uh, facing both in terms of earnings and in terms of inflation. Uh, next slide, please, uh, uh, Diana. So uh, the findings that I'm going to be uh, presenting here and using uh, for this particular uh, se segment of the presentation here is uh, are, are all based on TGI. Uh, TGI is a study that we do every year. Uh, we uh, uh, halted TGI uh, in 20, uh, uh, 19 and 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. We did something else, uh, a slightly smaller version. But uh, for the purpose of this particular research, we are looking at TGI. Uh, uh, 2019 and 2022 findings uh, and uh, interesting learnings here uh, and what we are presenting here is uh, the uh, change in claim monthly household income between 2019 and 2022 across urban India uh, and then uh, you know mapping it against uh, a compounded uh, inflation rate basis data from Oxford economics and essentially what we are looking at is if the compounded inflation rate between 2019 and 2022 uh, uh, beginning was about 17%, uh, we are looking at um, fairly, uh, you know, uh, most groups of uh, the uh, social economic spectrum as such kind of underperforming vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the inflation as such, inflation rate over the last uh, three years, except for uh, those right at the top of the uh, uh, pyramid, which is NCCSA1, which is just about 3% of urban population, where the income growth has been close to about uh, indexed at an index level at about 124, as against uh, the average at about 15% uh, growth over 2019 uh, claim monthly household income. Uh, the interesting uh, uh, thing is that uh, the uh, middle or the lower middle socioeconomic classes, uh, which is NCCSB, is probably the worst affected where the income growth has been markedly lower as compared to the inflation line. Uh, and probably the uh, segment that uh, uh, you know, uh, is, in a sense, uh, the bedrock of uh, uh, you know, urban consumption uh, as we move down uh, the socioeconomic spectrum. The CD, in any case, uh, have lower means as such, and therefore they are uh, low on consumption altogether. But uh, the impact uh, that is being seen in, uh, on NCCSB is quite sharp, clearly. And that's something that also, in a sense, is uh, reflecting in uh, what we've, uh, you know, seen the qualitative, uh, uh, you know, findings that uh, Ashwini uh, shared, where uh, people seem to be talking about the fact that over the last three years, uh, uh, you know, uh, earnings haven't gone up as much as uh, uh, prices have, and uh, consequently has impacted their uh, uh, spends across uh, various categories. Uh, going to the next slide, please. Uh, and as a result of uh, probably uh, what has happened to earnings and inflation, uh, what we are seeing is a consumer is a lot more cautious with their money. Uh, and this particular trend is a lot more pronounced as we move down the social uh, economic spectrum. Um, people who say that I'm a lot more care I'm careful with my money and agree strongly uh, to this particular sentiment or uh, attribute uh, uh, only goes up uh, you know, uh, and goes up fairly sharply as we uh, move down the social economic spectrum. Uh, next slide, please, Dan. Also, uh, uh, consumers at the lower end of the social economic spectrum, uh, particularly NCCSD, are uh, actively looking at cheaper price options uh, um, when they are going out shopping. Uh, this is something that's uh, True across the social economic spectrum, but uh, you know very sharply so um, in the uh, lower uh, in the NCCSDE. Next slide, please. Also, uh, what we're seeing is the consumer who's a lot more uh, deal seeking uh, is looking actively for uh, uh, promotions and purchasing accordingly. And again, uh, a fairly uh, clear trend as we move down the social economic spectrum where uh, uh, the incidence of people agreeing strongly to uh, the sentiment that they always look for special offers and discounts goes up uh, as we move down the social economic spectrum. So the consumer has become a lot more deal seeking, uh, much more pronounced in the lower end, uh, more value conscious consumer that is emerging and a consumer who's uh, uh, looking for uh, the uh, best or the lowest prices as such. And probably in the sense, this has uh, 
uh, and, and not just this, uh, there is also this aspect of uh, uh, the pandemic and uh, the enforced lockdown that occurred that led to uh, the growth in online shopping. But uh, what we are seeing is uh, between 2019 and 2022, there was a very sharp growth in uh, adoption of online shopping, particularly so in the lower socioeconomic classes. Uh, so uh, the period over the last three years has seen uh, 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 a significant recruitment at the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum, probably uh, on account of the fact that uh, online is able to, uh, uh, you know, make, uh, has been able to uh, offer better deals or, you know, better prices and has been advertising it uh, uh, successfully. And that is leading to many more people at the lower uh, end of the socioeconomic spectrum to uh, adopt online as such. So th this is broadly some of the uh, meta trends that uh, I've kind of you know pulled out from TGI, uh, uh, and uh, would now be handing over to Ramki uh, to share more from uh, the Canterbury panel uh, and a specific category insights. Thank you, Puneet. Uh, so we saw those meta trends that were shared by Puneet. Now what we're going to look at is how is it impacted behavior, uh, just to clarify for everybody's purpose, I, I represent World Panel where we track what consumers buy. So from the purchase data, we build insights around what their behavior is. And one word of caution is that my part of the, my section of the presentation is largely to do with uh, FMCG. And so therefore much of these will come from how people buy grocery and uh, anything in FMCG. Diana, can we move to the next slide? So if you look at FMCG growth rate and you kind of try to form a relationship between, let's say, inflation and FMCG growth rate, we've done it over several uh, years and we find that actually there isn't a great relationship. That doesn't mean that the consumer is not worried about inflation, but all I'm saying is there isn't a clearly establishable relationship. There isn't a high correlation factor. So there, the relationship is very difficult to find. Next one, please. However, what's different about this time's inflation is that it's clearly on the heels of a pandemic that we came out of. Now, the numbers that you see are all indexes of value that people pay per kg or liter or per unit of any FMCG. And we have kind of mapped it from uh, the quarter three of 2019 till now. Now, if you see the period in between 20 and 21, obviously there is a value jump there. And the jump was on account of the fact that people were adding to their basket things like sanitizers and uh, hand washes, which are on a per unit basis, extremely expensive. So that is what caused the increase at that point of time. In the subsequent period, in spite of the fact that these two specific items reduced from the basket, which is both sanitizer as well as hand wash, moment the fear of the pandemic eased out, though they started getting uh, off the shelf in most of the households. But despite that, the value is going up. So that's clearly led by uh, price increases as led by market here. So clearly it's an inflation led and it's just on the back of a pandemic and that's what is making things different this time. Can we go to the next please? Now this is a very interesting line. The, the purple line is the, is the volume line and the, and, the, and the blue line is the value line. As you can see very clearly, there's a divergence, right? I mean, there's a significant increase right through either on account of the pandemic or on account of the inflation. So at some stage, there is a need for a homemaker to be able to balance uh, the amount of money that they spend in purchase of house, uh, in, in the household products in terms of the volumes, in terms of the brands that they buy, or in terms of the categories that they buy, et cetera. So that's the kind of balance that a homemaker goes through. And what have they done this time is what we'll look at in the next few slides. So typically, consumer responses to high inflation are like these. One is that SKUs tend to get smaller. People, people start buying less, smaller packs of things. We heard that in some of the videos that were shared by uh, Ashwini as well. Second, there is a component of unbranded that tends to go up in the overall basket. We'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, sometimes we notice that costlier brands or premium segments tend to slow down. Has that happened this time? We'll see in a bit. And definitely people seek a lot of promotions. Uh, Puneet spoke about it, Ashwini's video spoke about it, Ashwini herself mentioned it as well. And this time in specific, there is a lot of bipolarity in purchases, which again, we'll talk about. Let's see these one by one. Let's look at uh, what happens in the first step. One is clearly we're seeing that people are, uh, homemakers are shopping more often, which means there are more shopping trips happening. Now, the numbers that you see are from August 20, which is uh, for a whole year period. It's a mat period of August, August 20, 21, and so on and so forth. If you see from 131 times, it's gone up to 147 times, which means more trips uh, for, uh, for shopping. And even if you look at it from a quarter perspective, like for June, July, and August, it's from 33 to 39 times, right? 
Now, at the same time, if you look at how much, how many units they buy in each time, let's take an average of grams, liters, and all of those put together, that is coming down, right? Per trip, 1,078 grams coming down to 918, and similarly on a, on a quarter basis. So people are going more often, buying lesser. Now, in what way does it uh, benefit the consumer? The next slide will perhaps help us understand this a little better. This kind of tells you uh, the average price versus the average spend per trip. So clearly what's happening is that blue line is the is what is in the control of the homemaker. So they're holding on to the spend. While they're increasing the number of spends, they're spending the same amount per, uh, per trip, which means they're saying that I can't spend more than this on my shopping trip. Even if I increase my trips, that's fine, but I can't spend more than this. So that is the way they tend to be balancing. And that balancing they do through a whole lot of things like you know SKU reduction, size reduction, and all of those things. So that's that's the that's a clear thing. That's the only way it seems to be helping consumers in a way. Can we move to the next, please? We spoke about the unbranded component, right? So there is very often people refer to households as branded households or unbranded households. Uh, one can categorically say that there's really nothing called as an unbranded household. Uh, most households have a combination of branded goods as well as unbranded goods, even within the same category. And they play one up against the other, depending upon the situation. I mean, if the situation is tight, sometimes unbranded goes up and it comes back in better times and so on and so forth. Or when offers come from, from, from manufacturers and marketers. Now, here you see some categories like, let's say, edible oils and spices, etc., where clearly the growth rate uh, of unbranded seems to be higher than the branded, clearly. And even in a category that is showing some levels of shrinkage, like, for example, ATA, Please don't get read this wrong as that ATA category is shrinking. It's just because a whole lot of free wheat is given by a lot of governments in India, as a result of which packaged ATA purchases are, have come down a bit. And in that, in that context as well, the unbranded component uh, is, is kind of lessening itself lesser than the branded component. Same story with butter and cheese. And if you take a look at batters, I mean, the likes of, uh, you know, dosa batter and stuff like that, in the South, we see a rapid growth in unbranded. So therefore, this is, a, this is one kind of behavior which the consumers are using to, uh, to fight against the, the inflationary trends that they are seeing. The next one, please. And in most categories, we see that where is the growth coming from? The growth is coming from the mass, uh, the mass segment of each of these uh, categories. Let's say detergent bars, shampoos, toothpaste, etc. We can see that the growth is coming from the, the mass much more than anyone else. The next one, please. And uh, this, is a, this is a fact that was spoken about by Puneet and Ashwini that the most households are looking at some form of promotion or the other when they're buying uh, FMCG. And that's not just an all India phenomenon, whether it's urban, rural, everywhere. The percentage of households that are buying FMCG on some form of promotion is definitely on the increase. Next. At the same time, we see that premium segment continues to grow. Right, like if you, each of these, this is the growth of the premium segment in these categories, like in, in whether it's moisturizers or tea or dishwash, we see that the premium household premium segment is growth. Uh, earlier, I showed you what typically people do during uh, during inflationary times, and we said that uh, expensive brands can get affected, but that's not what we are seeing. So the premium end is also growing, and the mass end is also growing. So to that extent, we are saying that uh, it's a kind of a polarized sort of behavior, which we'll understand a little better in the in the next few slides to come. Next, please. Yeah. So we've all, this is all data that's up for us to see in the media, right? I mean, hotel bookings have gone through the roof, domestic travel, pre-COVID levels, and much more than that. And we're talking about, you know, uh, eating out as a comp, which is QSRs are talking about great growths and so on and so forth. So there is, all of these are discretionary, whether it's air travel or hotels or QSRs or any of those, all of those are discretionary. And these are also seeing an upward trend. Next. And we can't talk about India and consumption without talking about movies, right? And this is the period, the inflationary period, when we are speaking about some of the highest levels of growth in terms of, uh, you know, uh, movies earnings. Uh, uh, this is the numbers here are for the Hindi versions of each of these movies, and they've all shown phenomenal numbers in spite of the fact that the average price of tickets is at least 30% more than 2019. So that's what I mean by saying there is a, uh, a kind of bipolar behavior. On the one hand, some of the discretionaries are going up, and on the other hand, there are some behaviors which are showing that. People are tending to, you know, buy, uh, go more often, buy lesser, and so on and so forth. So it's not a one, uh, it's not a single brush with which you can paint India to say this is how Indian consumer will react to inflation. It seems to be very situational, very category-led, and very uh, uh, in terms of what the consumer feels at the moment. I'll explain to you in just one more slide about this a little more. Can I move to the next? So here. You can see that within the same demographic also, there is diversity in behavior across categories. Let's just look at SECA, right? 
the numbers that you see are the basically the price increase that uh, that the category saw and the price increase as paid by the SECA within that category. Like if, if you see in categories like toilet soaps, toothpaste, and noodles, the SECA actually uh, did not show such an increase in value as the category took. However, if you look at shampoo, salts, and biscuits, it was different. So all that I'm trying to make in the last three slides, whether it was the movies or whether it's the discretionaries or these, is that do not look at inflation. If you're a marketer, do not look at inflation and say that's the way it's, it's going to impact every category in the same way. Massive differences in the way people react to. One fact is clearly that FMCG growth overall is not that well related to inflation. At the same time, there are some actions taken by consumers which give us some direction of how to manage situations in inflationary times. So that's what I have to say from purchase data, from a consumer lens, and I hope this has been of some use. And from here, we'll move on to look at uh, uh, how this inflation is being seen from a retail sense. Consumer, yes, but from a retail shelf perspective. And for that, I hand you over to Sonika uh, from Nielsen. Over to you, Sonika. Thank you. Thanks, Ramke. Um, so I'm Sonika. I represent Nielsen IQ, Retail Measurement Services. So uh, the product that brings in the robust understanding about what's happening in terms of consumption patterns. So we heard about inflation. We heard about what's happening in the economy and how consumers are behaving. Let's see that what is the intensity in terms of the consumption pattern shift that's happening um, on the ground for this quarter. Yeah. So to start with, uh, when we look at the overall FMCG trends, we see that the story is all not bad when it comes to the impact of inflation. Yes, it's there, uh, but there is a recovery when it comes to consumption, which is led by price. So let's try and understand in the next slide that whether this price is because of change in the consumption pattern related to the manufacturers reducing the pack size, or consumers themselves going for smaller pack size, yeah? So this one shows that the consumption drop that we saw and we, uh, in the earlier slide, we saw a recovery uh, is primarily because of the drop in average pack size. So we heard Ramke that consumers are going to the uh, stores more often, so frequent trips, uh, but over there, what they're picking up is a smaller pack size but uh, more number of trips. So unit growth bounces back for the consumer um, on the shelf over here, yeah? Now let's go and see that, um, um, how are the textures when it comes to food and non-food basket? Is the texture in terms of consumers going and picking up more units similar for food and non-food or does that vary? So uh, before we come into the details in terms of what's happening on food or non-food, again, the silver lining over here in terms of the recovery of uh, volume consumption that we are talking about uh, is that um, in the industry on the shelf, um, there's a lesser uh, number of categories which are degrowing. So the numbers over here on the left-hand side are for the two last quarters, JFM and AMJ. So in the first quarter of JM, JFM, we saw a higher number of categories spread across food and non-food um, that were registering uh, more than 5% decline. Now in the recent quarter, the number of categories with that kind of decline has come back. So recovery is definitely there. And let's see where this recovery is coming from, where the consumer has kind of balanced their uh, monthly budget and um, have started purchasing the more units that we talk about, yeah? So then we go to the next slide. We see a split and the trend in terms of how food, which is the major um, portion of any monthly budget, 61% and also uh, for the industry, and the 31% that's coming from non-food. So we see here that non-food is driving the volume decline much more. Um, and higher price growth is seen for non-foods, yeah? So we heard all about the impact of commodity price increase. So non-food seems to be impacted more, impact of uh, Ukraine war and on the economy. So non-food seems to be impacted more when it comes to the change in consumption patterns of the consumer. But why would that be happening, yeah? So because as consumers, we would always prioritize food yeah, and um, non-food continues to be deprioritized when it comes to making choices. 
Uh, so for food, if you really look at the left uh, bottom chart over here, you see that there is a positive turn when it comes to this quarter in terms of picking up food. In fact, when you talk about impulse uh, as a basket, which includes salty snacks, biscuit, chocolate, and some of similar categories, you see that the uh, consumer is picking up more despite the price increases which are there. And when we look at non-food, we see that the decline is everywhere except for categories which are in other personal care. And what do we define as other personal care? So there are categories which are kind of small indulgences in terms of Dio's perfumes. And we know that AMJ was a, a summer season for most part of the country. So categories like talcum powder and uh, similar also um, drove this volume uh, uh, recovery when it comes to the non-food basket. So that's where uh, the prioritization of the basket is happening. And also uh, now where is the whole pack um, exchange or the shift happening? Yes. So uh, in food, when you see the left-hand side of the chart, you see that the drop is in terms of the average pack size. So consumers buying more, but smaller pack size, frequent trips. However, when you come to the right-hand side of the chart, which talks about various baskets within non-foods, you will see that um, within non-foods, uh, home care basket is where the decline for number of units have ha uh, has happened. So consumers have deprioritized that segment or the other way to look at tying it with the unbranded story that Ramki brought for us is that there are options within home care essentials. So for four cleaners, you have an unbranded option. For a toilet cleaner, you have unbranded option that the consumer can uh, go back to. But there's another point over here. It's not all movement to unbranded because when we look at the uh, unit story over here, the consumption is still happening. So it's not like that everybody has moved to unbranded, but people are buying uh, smaller packs also over there. Yeah. So from this story of how consumption patterns are moving, uh, the question would be that uh, the more trips that the consumer is making to the stores um, and picking up of smaller pack size only a matter of the money that is there in the wallet? No, it's also a function of how the pack sizes are available in the market. So we know because of the all economic pressure that was there, manufacturers reduced the grammages for the uh, packs that are there. Even at the magic point, price points of five and 10, the trends over here give you a visual understanding of how the grammages got dropped. And hence the consumers had to buy more units um, and more trips to the uh, stores for the consumption. Yeah. Now, while we're talking about all about consumption, how consumers are doing, it will be interesting to see that which are the brands or which are the kind of players who are making the buck over here. So with RMS, we are able to segregate the industry into large players, medium players, and smaller players. During COVID times, we spoke about how uh, small players were severely impacted. Now is the time when small players are coming back and providing the stock on the shelf and consumers are picking over there and hence the recovery is seen for the entire FNCG market. Yeah, so with these nuggets in terms of how consumption patterns are changing and how is the jugglery happening between the pack sizes, I hand it over to Maitri to take it forward for all of you. Thank you, Sonika. Uh, what I will be talking about is really how the consumers are behaving, therefore, with all the inflation that's impacting them. And we did hear from Puneet, from Ashwini, and from Ramki and Sonika how the behavior, there isn't one uh, brush that you know, paints the entire landscape. They, they, there is a clear difference in how everyone is behaving. There are different strategies that are being used by the consumers. Can we move to the next slide, please? The next one, please. So the consumers really are thinking of, uh, there's a constant degree of reprioritization that's happening. The next slide. 
uh, and there are different strategies here. So when it comes to product X versus product Y, there is there, there isn't a standardization here. The consumer is constantly stressed and is always thinking, uh, does this really need my attention today or can I pick it up tomorrow? Uh, there is a realization that uh, the budget is going to be stretched for the month and therefore there is a need to review uh, purchases very very closely on a daily basis a lot of them are also being smart about this and the smartness is coming in by constantly looking for discounts for promotions uh, if there is a need to subscribe to a product so that they can get a better discount they're doing going and doing all of that and it is varying by categories there is a realization that uh, if I if I do downgrade, is it going to be giving me a lot more benefit? Does it really matter at the end of the day if it's just a packet of biscuits? It won't. Uh, but there is a realization that there is a need to curtail one's expenses and watch them with a very close eye. And and we see here the entire family is is uh, very very closely involved in this planning and budgeting. We can move to the next slide. Uh, so while, of course, all of them are curtailing and watching their expenses clo closely, there is a clear stress because this can't really be a long term solution. All of them are looking at working uh, and they all work very hard. So there is clearly uh, the desire to give into small indulgences over the week. And when one is not able to do that, it does add on to the pressures and, and it does create a lot of stress in their own mind for themselves. Are they really being the best providers? If you can go to the next slide and that's when they start to you know kind of figure out if they really are progressing in life that's when they start to figure out what kind of choices that one really should be making uh, there is a lot of questioning of their own self-worth are they really uh, living up to what they were supposed to do are they being the good provider for the family and that's when you know certain degree of embarrassment thoughts of of being providers of, of doing what one really is supposed to be delivering on as as the head of the house all those questions come into place next slide side please and this is when they start to think, think if there is a really a need to think of other alternative uh, income sources it could be a need for upskilling a lot of them are doing a lot of new new courses they are they're doing parallel jobs they're all trying to boost their incomes we also see behaviors of risk where some of them are either investing in shares uh, looking at stocks very closely and then there are certain traditional behaviors which are visible as well uh, which comes to you know buying and investing in gold and in property so what they really are trying to do is figure out a solve for giving into those indulgences indulgences can be big those indulgences can be small but uh, it, it is not something that one would want to compromise and curtail over a long period of time and we will hear some of the consumers talk about this in the next couple of slides next time so what you want to hear is consumers talk about the stresses that they are uh, experiencing I try to buy in bulk, जैसे कि 25 kg की होनी होती है rice की। अगर हम ज़्यादा quantity में लेते हैं, तो कुछ discounts मिल जाता है। पहले मैं अक्सर frontier की biscuit ले आती थी, तब वो 350 के मिलते थे, अब वो 5600 हो गए हैं। तो अब मैं frontier की जगह normal जो brands आती हैं, जो हम लोग खाते हैं, McVitie's and all. Offers Jada Dictu, Kikaha Pekuchis, whom offers Ode one plus one free, Ampe, Yata twenty five percent discount, thirty percent discount, Abi fifteen August Katha, to Kai Jagape, Bohot Sarichis Ope, flat sixty percent, seventy five up to seventy five percent offers. To manage inflation, maximum what I am able to do is cut down on my you know expenses and trying to take up odd jobs or extra you know part-time jobs to increase the income there is no other way because if I have to take care of my family home and everything <laughs> दूसरी बात तो है मैं थोड़ा शिलाई मशीन पे शिलाई के कपड़े भी शिलाई करती हूँ तो उससे भी थोड़ी मुझे मदद मिलती है जैसे मान के चलो मेरे अपने अपने पैसे बैंक में रखता हूँ 
जो भी अगर मेरे पास कुछ है मैं अगर बैंक में रखता हूँ तो उसकी तो कोई वैल्यू नहीं है क्योंकि साढ़े तीन परसेंट के हिसाब से मुझे इंटरेस्ट मिलेगा तो उसका कोई मतलब नहीं है और अगर मैं अपने मनी को घर में रखता हूँ तो उसका भी कोई मतलब नहीं है पाँच परसेंट महंगाई बढ़ रही है तो कोई यूज़ नहीं है तो मेरा अगर अपनी इनकम को बढ़ाने का एक सोल्यूशन ये कि अगर मैं अगर कोई पैसे हैं अगर मेरे को प्रॉपर्टी में सोचना है तो मैं प्रॉपर्टी अभी लेने की सोच रहा हूँ या गोल्ड के अंदर बिकॉज प्रॉपर्टी का ये है कि दिन पर दिन रेट और आगे हाई होने हैं थैंक्स माई थ्रिक जस्ट अ क्विक कॉल आउट टू ऑल पैनलिस्ट अश्विनी पुनीत राम की सोनिका थैंक्स अलॉट for sharing content which i know is not available from any other source it given us a wonderful perspective on what's happening and how consumers are changing their behavior uh, to deal with inflation uh, let me quickly sum up some key points that kind of uh, stuck to my mind if i may use that phrase and then move on quickly to q and a uh i think the first point that uh, was made was inflation is not new to us it might be for some other geographies uh, but we've always had inflation but this time what's unique is it's it's coming uh, on the back of a pandemic which obviously impacted different people in different ways including income levels and i think the other observation or rather uh, inference that i'm taking is uh, consumers like just all of us on this call are very intelligent and they're doing some significant trade offs when it comes to uh, how to make their money you know work harder right uh, we had different uh, views from each of you uh, puneet you spoke about uh, e-commerce expanding its footprint probably its choice probably its convenience uh, probably its pricing or a combination of all that uh, ramki you spoke of uh, how consumers are coping with inflation with making more trips and buying packs of smaller sizes and you also spoke about how uh, you know trade offs are happening within categories and between categories you know you spoke of context of discretionary versus essential uh, and i think sonika also you know took a similar perspective in saying there's food and non food when obviously food is a, you know important fuel for our life and i can do it with a little less of something else so so consumers are kind of doing a very tough balancing act keeping uh, you know their i guess uh, outlay more or less constant to what it was and and i'm sure it's a struggle uh, uh, you know at the same time what was also interesting is uh, you know the perspective that maitre shared obviously it's a lot of stress but it's also interesting to note that uh, people are multitasking trying to have different sources of income reskilling themselves uh, or people with money are saying you know i'm going to invest it elsewhere you know i'm not going to put it in a bank fd right so so it's a all around interesting perspective but i think uh, none of you disagreed on anything all of you said inflation is impacting us as consumers and and we are making those difficult choices uh, and uh, what you also called out was uh, marketers uh, you know who are our primary customers in a way right if you kind of say consumers keep them aside for a bit um, are dealing with it very differently there was a window of opportunity i guess uh, sonika you spotlighted it saying that there were several small players who had squeezed out of the market because they probably did not have the ability to price and survive and that gave a window for larger established players to kind of take market share but it's quite heartening to note that competition is coming back these players are coming back and make sure that you know uh, uh monopolies don't take this right you know at the end of the day uh, prices can be anything uh it can be much higher if there is no competition and it's it's quite heartening to see that competition is coming back so with that summary i'll hand you to samir i guess he is having some problems with his video so you'll just hear him uh and we'll kick start the q and a thanks again to all of you yeah thank you everybody this is samir grover uh, apologies for my camera here um it was an amazing it is an amazing session and thank you for your time i know that each one of you uh have a lot of other commitments and you took out time for this and also the same for the audiences um the first question 
um, and I think I'll start quantitatively and then I'll move to qualitatively on this, is, is the consumption back to pre-COVID levels? So maybe we can start with the word panel on this one. Uh, so, like again, it's it's a, it's not a question that can be answered. Pan, uh, I would say overall FMCG definitely, but it varies by category. To a large extent, I would say it is uh, it is by it is back to the pre-COVID levels. Got it, Sonika. Yeah. So when we look at the absolutes for most of the categories uh, across both no food and non-food, uh, we see that the levels are coming back to pre-COVID. So that recovery is definitely there. Thank you, Sonika. Ashwini. Yeah, yes. Qualitatively, if you want to look at what you have sensed in uh, in your discussions and con conversations with, um, you know, consumers, do you think the consumption levels are back to pre-COVID levels? Uh, so, um, in certain categories, again, you know, what uh, both Sonika and Ramti spoke about, yes, uh, to a certain extent, we do see, you know, revenge spending, which is happening with the higher LTCs because, you know, you know, uh, holidaying a lot more, eating out a lot more, but amongst the lower socioeconomic classes, the B and C, it is still a stretch, uh, you know, because of inflation, uh, there is a stretch on consumption per se. So there is a difference by demographics I would think, and also by category. Thank you. That, 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 that is a good, good learning. Thank you. Uh, Puneet, I'll actually ask you this one. <laughs> uh, the question is how the purchase behavior changes specifically majorly from offline to online. And uh, how this impact, how Impacting the consumers and boost them to fight against inflation. So the fact that uh, there has been a very sharp growth in uh, adoption of online uh, e-commerce, as such, in the uh, at the lower end of the social economic spectrum, as also if we uh, uh, look at IQ data, which I have uh, looked at, uh, there is also a sharp growth increasingly being seen up country and uh, rural as well, where the likes of Misho, et cetera, have been doing very well, is an indicator of the fact that A, Indians are a lot more comfortable with technology. And uh, given the fact that they are looking at deals, they are looking, they are a lot more price conscious, they are uh, seeking to manage their money better. Anybody who's able to provide them that service uh, is going to be successful. And I think that is one of the factors that has fueled the growth of uh, online uh, and uh, to my mind that's that's something that is going to continue to happen over the next uh, two three years not just in terms of consumer facing online commerce but also b2b uh, 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 you know uh, online commerce as such which brings in better supply chain efficiencies thank you but how about um, fighting inflation so uh, the only way in which inflation can be fought off is uh, by uh, bringing in better efficiencies. And the efficiencies is what need to be offered to the consumer. Uh, uh, and if, if a particular platform is able to do that successfully uh, and in a consistent fashion across the entire basket of consumer requirements, they would be successful. And we know that uh, consumer spending has moved towards uh, online in a uh, significant manner. We are looking at, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, e-commerce uh, hitting close to about $200 billion in the next uh, 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 three years as such in the country. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. I think this, this question has actually been posted a few times and I was just going to put it out there. Anybody wants to answer this is that what is the solution? How do we fight inflation? Because uh, the metrics which are put out there about, um, you know, how we compare with uh, especially the Western countries, uh, and anybody just take it up, is that, so how do we fight inflation? And and um, anybody like can take it up. Can I go? Yeah, please, Ram. Yeah, first of all, I don't, uh, I, I don't think we need to fight. Uh, <laughs> why would you fight it? I mean, you have to, you have to in, in, learn to manage it. 
and uh, you know kind of coexist with it. you can't do away with it right i mean it's not something in your hands something that uh, inflation is something which is macroeconomic global whatever it's too many things which are imponderables which are not necessarily in your hands so to that extent fighting is not the issue the issue is managing the inflation in a scenario now from how the consumer manages it was the content of this whole discussion i think uh, sonika spoke about it mm. i spoke about it uh, ashwini spoke about it and puneet did so consumer managing it in a different way if you are a marketer i think there are clues from consumer behavior itself which would help you manage the situation of inflation like for example if the consumer is making more trips then the uh, the portion proportion of your investment in points where the consumer makes the trips whether it's physical or online that needs to be heightened right so that's one part of it second if the pack sizes are getting smaller how do you manage the pack sizes without the consumer feeling that the quantum is going down too much so that's the, the second level of management that you do the third level of management is to see uh, the lower the pack sizes the difference between unbranded and branded or the difference between small brand and big brand also goes down like for example if you say 10 rupee pack 10 rupee pack is a 10 rupee pack whether it's a tresemme or whether it's a you know some mm. any local brand as well so to that extent how do we manage that are all cuz consumers give us clues you no know? so the more you watch the behavior of consumers uh, either from a retail lens or from a purchase lens i think there are there are answers from that so to that extent i would uh, strongly say there isn't any fighting uh should we lo- lose ram ke yeah uh what is yeah that? i think the bit of a uh, challenge so i can probably step in in the meantime yeah he's back yes ram sorry ram ki we, we 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 lost you in the end we can't hear you yeah yeah so so i was just saying that it's it's, it's summarizing that it's not really anything to fight very very uh, good my, can you hear me now very, yeah very good points ram ki thank you uh, sonika you want to step in yeah so um as in line with ramki said so if even our prime minister is saying when the problem is global the solution cannot be local yeah so the inflation thing is everywhere across markets so picking up clues so we know that when we try to do segmentation of consumers we try to do based on choices and aspects um here is a thought in terms of doing it based on economic situation i'm not talking about sec abc strugglers versus thrivers so covid has changed lives for everybody and with the new consumption patterns uh, emerging how does the manufacturers and the marketers um, address the needs of thrivers who are economically well placed versus the ones who are going in for these smaller uh, pack sizes and units i think that's uh, one of the ways of really uh, handling and kind of making back over there we know that with small packs the bottom lines of the manufacturers would definitely be hurt so there mm. has to be really innovative thinking in terms of ensuring that how should the investment be made um, in small packs uh, and still the profitability of the uh, manufacturers uh, uh, staying intact and yet addressing the consumer need i think that would be my take on this thank you thank you so we're talking about uh... uh more of how do not only marketers look at it but also from an r&d and production perspective how do we look at it right thank you thank you so the next question is is uh, and again uh, sameer so, sorry to interrupt uh we are 2 minutes from closing time uh we have a choice of keeping the q&a session running for another 5 minutes if you would like would you like to do that or or we can get our panelists to respond to the questions and post it along with the video i mean we can do either uh i'm just taking a quick view around the table saying that we are okay continuing for 5 more minutes before we wrap up ramki opanit uh, fine yes sonika all right so uh, qu- quite unprecedented for wednesday webinars we are extending the session for 5 minutes uh, to make okay. sure we can answer as many questions from our audience as possible over to you sir thank you quick one this one anybody can take it um, how are the behaviors different from consumption and inflation with respect to inflation rural versus urban or and or region specific north west east south are there any specific things we are looking at uh so i can take that one uh, when it co- comes to the geographies 
So uh, one of the points that we didn't put up over there on the chart, but when we are talking about the recovery in consumption, urban is showing a faster recovery as compared to rural. So that's a broad one. And um, we were anticipating that with um, season, the rainfalls and all those economic uh, factors getting taken care and all the whole government um, investment and um, initiatives focused on rural, it will revive back. But we know how the rains have been. So I think, the, so currently, if we talk about uh, H1 of the year till June, uh, urban is the one that has recovered well, uh, and rural is slow on recovery. And uh, the similar patterns get reflected on food versus non-food as well. So non-food um, pickup and consumer going for branded non-food is definitely lower as compared to food. So that's um, on the overall piece. Thank you. Thank you. Just to Thank add to just to add to Sonika and that, uh, the urban-rural difference, the big difference is the fact that the basket size is smaller in rural. I mean, if you take the number yeah. of items that get into the shopping basket, that's smaller in rural. So to that extent, there's lesser room for discretion or lesser room for something to get dropped out and come in, etc. So from that point of view, it's been tighter in rural, which is what uh, uh, we hear Sonika say as well in terms of the recovery in urban being better. And from an overall region uh, perspective, et cetera, I, I have no fundamental difference other than what we've seen pre-inflation or pre-pandemic kind of periods, because it's north behaves as north and south behaves as north as, as south. So to that extent, there isn't a substantial difference across geographies, but urban and rural, this is the difference that we see. Fair, fair. Next question. This is actually specifically for uh, Ashwini and Maitri, um, uh, which is, uh, as inflation settles down and normalize, which of these consumer behaviors changes uh, sustain and which are likely to go off? Consumers who downgrade, are they likely to shift back? Maybe I can take a go at me and then. Uh, so I think what, what really is happening is that uh, there is a realization that there is, they are curtailing. There, there is a certain degree of compromise that is happening. And, and last two years of COVID, uh, people have not really indulged. So there are certain areas where in certain categories, they are looking out to go all out. That's why we heard Ramki also talk about a lot of holidays, a lot of, you know, e-com uh, boom that, that's happening otherwise, trips that are happening. But there are some places where people are, are wanting to give in those indulges and they, they, they're not able to for reasons that we all spoke about. So eventually we do see some degree of behaviors going back to normal that that realization will be setting in. See, all of us buy off for a better life, right? So, I mean, when they're downgrading, they're very conscious of the fact that they're downgrading and it impacts their lifestyle. So eventually, once you know money is not as tight, uh, people will want to upgrade and move to better brands. Unless you know the cheaper brands are giving them exactly the same value, both from a functional as well as an emotional perspective, which is unlikely. Uh, we see that you know that bounce back is likely to be there. Got it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there, there are a lot of questions flowing in, but I'm, I know that I'm, I'm going to be. Uh, uh, specifically looking at the time here. This is a fun question. Hindi films. Uh, Hindi films have not done well, apart from the four mentioned, <laughs> Ramki. Uh, could it be because North is impacted more and have less discretionary income? Uh... I don't have specific data to back my answer, but I can uh, I can actually uh, take on that question in the sense that both all the four films that we spoke about did exceedingly well in the in the Hindi belt, uh, whether it's Pushpa or RRR or any of those. Their collections in the Hindi belt were uh, vastly better than the rest of India. So to so it's not absolutely right to say that North did not behave any differently. Perhaps the content appealed more. I guess uh, I, I can't say anything more than that. I got that. That's, I think there's a shifting behavior of the entire India where uh, there is no Bollywood, Tollywood, or Mollywood. It's more of uh, films uh, and Indian film industry. And that's my just just my thought on it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Sundar, we are at 204. How do you want to uh, go 205 now? Yeah, we should just do some of the call outs, announcements, and thank our panelists again, I guess. So, Please go Vienna, if you can put the slides back. 
and of course thank our audience as well sorry Samir, it's your turn to follow the early bird. Absolutely, absolutely. We have extended the early bird for the upcoming seminar. And this is the annual seminar of MRSI. And remember, we have not had a physical seminar for almost three years now. So this is gonna be so much fun. And we all, as an industry, come together, clients, in Gurgaon at the Leela Ambience and the early bird is extended to 24th of October. So go and register and register your team and any questions just write at info at the rate mrsi.co.n. Diana, next slide. Stay tuned for the next webinar. We do it monthly. We are gonna finalize our, our next webinar uh, very soon. Uh, and uh, we will announce it and send it over in an email. And uh, I really, really want to thank our panelists here. Um, a lot of effort and um, hard work has gone in to prepare this uh, webinar today. And not only effort, but also coordination across uh, big three agencies which uh, and, and multiple products. Um, so really thank you, uh, Maitri and Ashwini. Thank you, Ramki. Thank you, Puneet. And thank you, Sonika, for uh, being here. And I really thank the uh, attendees and audience for uh, you know being here today. It has been, for me, I, I have learned a lot today and I think this is uh, a very, very beneficial and uh, a big learning for all of us uh, as a webinar. So thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.